In this question, we're asked, given that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, show that log base a of x over y is equal to log base a of x and log base a of y. First thing to do in this question is to declare that we have a variable p, and that is equal to log base a of x. And that, that leads us to the relationship that x is equal to a to the power of p. Next, we state very similarly that q is equal to log base a of y. And so that leads to the relationship that y is equal to a to the power of q. That is the first step of any log proof, identifying this, these two relationships. Next step, I want to do x divided by y. So the next step is always given by what rule are we trying to prove. Here we're trying to prove that quotient rule here. So I'm going to do x divided by y. So x divided by y is given as a to the power of p over a to the power of q. This means if I tidy this up using laws of indices, x over y is equal to a to the power of p minus q. Now, if I take log base a of both sides, I get log base a of x over y is equal to log base a of a to the power of p minus q. Now, log base a and a to the power of something are inverse functions, so this leads to log base a of x over y being equal to p minus q. At this point, we go back to our original definitions and we say, okay, well, sub p equals log base a of x and q equals log base a of y. Back into this equation so that I get log base x over log base a of x over y is equal to log base a of x minus log base a of y as required. Okay, now let's have a look to see how the mark scheme awards marks this. So first of all, there is a standalone mark for identifying the two relationships between x and y and a to the power of p and a to the power of q. Second mark is for bits is a standalone mark for use of the laws of indices for x divided by y being leaving us with a to the power of p minus q. And then finally, third mark is then for simplifying and substituting back in to get to our result as required. Okay then, let's have a look at part b of this question. Part B asks to find all values of x satisfying the equation log base a of 6x squared plus 9x plus 2 minus log base a of x is equal to 4 times log base a of 2. First thing to do is we're aiming on both the left hand side and the right hand side to simplify them to one single log. So on the left hand side, I'm now going to rewrite this using the law that we used a moment ago, or proved a moment ago, and I'm now going to write this as 6x squared plus 9x plus 2 all over x. On the right hand side I'm going to use the power law which means that the coefficient 4 can go up as a power of 2 so I get log base a of 2 to the power of 4. Now since log of this function here is equal to log of this function here that leads to the fact that we have 6x squared plus 9x plus 2 over x is equal to 2 to the power of 4. So I'm going to times both sides by x to get rid of that denominator. So on the left hand side I have 6x squared plus 9x plus 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 is 16x. And so I'm left with a quadratic to solve. So if I subtract 16x from both sides in order to get this equation equal to 0. I get 6x squared minus 7x 
plus 2 equals 0. So now I want to factorise my quadratic. 6 times 2 gives me 12. I want factors of 12 that will sum to give me minus 7, so that's going to be 3 and 4. So I can say, okay, well, 6. Start that, try that again. 6x squared minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. I can take 3x as a common factor out for those first two terms, so I get left with 2x minus 1. I can take minus 2 out as a common factor of the second two terms, so I get left with 2x minus 1. And then the 2x minus 1 is a common factor, so I can take that outside and that leaves the coefficients of that bracket as the terms inside the second bracket. So we get 2x minus 1, 3x minus 2 equal to 0. So finally I, I can finish off by saying that x is equal to a half and x is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, well, let's have a look to see how the marks are awarded in this question. Initially, there is a standalone mark for the correct use of the subtraction law. Then there is a standalone mark for the correct use of the power law. There is then a method mark for removing the logs. And then there is a method mark for a correct attempt to trying to solve the quadratic. Finally, the last mark, the answer mark, is given for getting both values of x correct. Okay, well I hope you was able to follow my solution and that you understood how to mark that question.